Really exciting news today. A really good friend, longtime friend and advisor just sold his business that he co-founded for almost $300 million. So I'm gonna give you the entire breakdown and the backstory about what they did to get a $400 million exit and how we can replicate it in our own businesses too. So I am talking about my bro Cy Gray and his sister B. They co-founded this brand called The Honey Pot in 2012 in Atlanta. And they recently went public to announce their partnership and acquisition in a $380 million investment into their business by Cody, a publicly traded company that has a whole bunch of history in growing and selling additional businesses. So they've got an amazing partner that could help them take the business to the next level. Which is cool is, Sai has been an advisor of mine when I wanted to start our business. He and B sat me down, helped me figure out manufacturing and supply chain. When we were in the process of selling our business, he was a really cool advisor giving me um, kind of feedback. And the cool thing about Sai is, He's been a private investor behind a bunch of different brands. He was an early investor in Bevel that eventually got acquired uh, acquired by Procter & Gamble. He was uh, early in uh, The Gathering Spot, which last year got acquired. He was their first CFO. And Sai has been like behind the scenes, just a really cool investor and just money dude for a while. So I'm really happy to see him win and uh, come up. I was just showing uh, my video editor here, Carlos, you can't see this, but we'll put it up on camera. Last year, January, I met up with him and his H at their HQ, and we talked about the possibility of this happening. Now seeing it real, it's just crazy. So tell him a little bit excited about this, because, you know, who knows someone who just sold their business for three, four hundred million dollars? Like someone you could text and pick up and call and like pull up on and just shoot the shit with. So I'm really, really excited for this, but more so really excited about what this means for us. There's this concept called the four minute mile, where for a while, no one thought they could actually hit a mile in under four minutes. So no one even tried to do it. And then there was this one guy, we'll drop his name in the on the video here, I forgot his name right now, but he hit the mile in under four minutes. And since then, dozens of other people are now hitting the mile in four minutes. So when you see someone that you know, you like, you trust, is a good person, looks like you from the same place, them hit this milestone, it only opens up the door for many other people behind them. Here's how this story happened. Years ago, his sis B had a cleaning business. Cy was a, a money dude in the entertainment industry. He he managed a lot of people's money, like B.O.B. and a bunch of other people, helped them manage their money, invest their money. He's a CPA by trade. And with his additional money, he started early investing in companies. And she had this really cool idea, and they just they would just pour bottles at his house and just sell it out, you know, pretty much out the trunk. And then went to trade shows, and it turned into a thing. Uh, we had Sai come and speak at our mastermind this past year, and one of the things that was so interesting with them is even when they're doing eight figures, they were still operating very, very, very simply. They operated still at their HQ, a small condo in Atlanta. And the majority of their sales still came from a few hit records. So it's a lot of the principles we teach here about building a seven-figure business. They built an eight and eventually a nine-figure business too. So I'm going to take some excerpts from when he spoke to our mastermind and a little bit about what he shared so you guys could duplicate it in your business too. The first thing is simplicity scales. Like I've been preaching this and it's so true. Like it's interesting when I say it and then you're like, eh, you guys had, you know, one beard oil up to half a million dollars in sales. And then it's interesting when I say, by the way, we just helped another founder get rid of all her inventory and focus on one product and went from 10 to $60,000 per month in only 90 days. But now I'm showing you someone who built a nine figure business, right? At the time of their sale, it's public now, so I could share this outside of the mastermind, but they did $121 million last year across 33,000 different retail stores and over 50% of their uh, revenue is really de derived from one hit record, right? It's their wash. That was a lead-in product, right? And so they have different scents and things like that, but that's the thing that they're known for. If you think about it, they're doing tens of millions of dollars from one product. And we are still at six figures with our business at, or low seven figures. And we feel the need to bring and introduce a bunch of different products. So the thing that they did beautifully is they had they became known for one thing, which is their feminine wash, and they maximize that, right? They're now the fifth largest feminine care brand according to retail. And I believe before they sold, they were the largest retail 
a business that was owned by an African American or a woman, I forgot which one, but it was one of those, largely because they became known for one thing, simple products. Then after they became known for that thing and they earned the trust of all their consumers, they started adding additional products. So that was one thing, simplicity scales. The second thing, which is another thing that he preached, that we preach to our audience is the importance of community. They never sacrificed quality of product in serving their community. It was always their mission to be a voice for women and to help them in this sensitive topic and this sensitive area and lead with that. So oftentimes when we were talking to them, they were putting the best ingredients in their products, even though they could have found cheaper alternatives. And they always led with just doing what was best because they were focused on the long game, not making a quick buck or making an extra 25 cents or 50 cents on a product, but looking at the impact of if they made something so good and they created a safe space for women where women were heard and felt and their needs were met, how much longer they could keep that customer coming back. And they always focused on community first. His sis, the co-founder, who's the CEO and face of the brand, she's almost like a radical in this world of just like women rights and women empowerment. And so community was a big part of that. And it's also a big part of what we bleed and preach too, because it's better to first start with a community of people and figure out what they need and go out and find that for them and serve them there, then trying to find a product and shove it down people's throat. So simplicity and then community first. And really they follow the abs method of building wealth. Oftentimes, especially in our community, we talk about how do we get rich, right? We see all the data about how our community is so far behind other communities, like the Asian community, the Jewish community, a dollar and money in their community stretches versus in ours. And a big part of it is studying what people do well and replicating it. And in all those communities, like the most traditional way to build wealth is through what I call the ABS method, ABS. Acquire equity in assets, build up the value of that asset, and sell some or all. And that's exactly what they did. They created this thing in 2012, thought about the long game, not how much money they could make quickly, how they could screw people over, how they could penny pinch, but how they could build up the value of this thing. And then now they found a partner who has a history of partnering with good companies and growing them and taking them to the next level. So now they're gonna be part of a publicly traded company so they could expand what they're doing. And the beautiful thing about this is that's the exact same thing that we can do. If we have a community that we serve, whether it be uh, recent moms, whether it be nurses, essential workers, and we have a community with them, they're always buying and selling products, right? Think about this, they sold feminine hygiene washes, largely. That's not really rocket science, right? You're just looking at the community and figuring out what problem they had and figuring out a way to do something better that already exists and just show up and serve. So think about it if we have a business, if we got that business to $100,000 per month, right? That's $1.2 million a year and you have a decent profit margin, let's say a 30% profit margin, you're making 400 grand a year in profit. If you sell that business, you could probably make $1.6 million off of that business. If you're doing certain things right, you could probably make two or $3 million off of that business in three to four years, kind of like how we started and scaled and sold our business in three to four years. It's very possible. That may not be a $380 million exit, but for many people, getting $1.6 million wired into your account is game changer, right? That could set your, that pays for your kid's tuition. That pays off a house or puts half down on a house. Like that changes the trajectory of your life. And it's just soap. They sold soap. They don't, it's not rocket science. They're not creating new cancer drugs. I'm not to take away from the genius of it, but I'm trying to say like, it doesn't need to be that crazy. You don't have to come up with a cure to cancer to have a $380 million payday. You just have to find a community that you want to serve, create a product that's actually helpful to them, and keep the business model simple as it scales. So I just wanted to share um, this video to one, shout out my brother Sai, an Atlanta legend that's been behind the scenes helping a bunch of other brands. I just mentioned a couple, uh, The Gathering Spot, Bevel, a bunch of other things. So I'm really happy for him that he finally got his day to shine uh, and got his pay off for all of his hard work, especially the work and advice and guidance he's given me and all of the founders in our community. And then two, to see if there is anything that they can do that we can replicate because success leaves clues. And so we studied what he did 
And we study what some of the wealthiest families in the world did, right? The Elon Musk, the majority of the billionaires, the majority of the people who are worth 100 mil, they've all acquired asset in a business, built up the value of it, and sold some or all of it, which is the exact blueprint for size. So I just want to publicly shout out these guys, um, Cy and B, for becoming one of the 1% and paving the way from us, right? Um, the other thing worth mentioning before we, we cut this video is, when I talk about how we built and sold our business, when I'm working with women-owned businesses or founders who are of color and they're thinking about doing it, they're always concerned about, man, my audience is going to think I sold out. What's up with that? So let me spend a little time addressing that. You know, it is what it is, but sad part about it is we don't see that conversation in a lot of other communities. Um, and I think of it differently. Like, look at how much more impact they can have to their community now that they have done that and been there. Because who else has the $380 million to acquire companies in our position if they don't first have this cash out? So now they're in a position to invest, to become investors, to become owners, to become advisors, to help pave the way, right? So if I want to start up another brand, sell for 50 mil or 100, now I have access to these people in my network who have done it and could help me navigate the waters and avoid the common pitfalls and mistakes to help me achieve that outcome faster. And now that other investors, Wall Street, the stock market sees that you can go out and build and acquire brands from people like us, now they pave and open the they pave the way and open the doors for more people to come behind them and have these exits. So I think it's a good thing. If people like him or people like Myel Organics, people like Shea Moisture don't go out and sell their company for 600 mil, a billion, 380 mil. We don't know it's possible and we don't have a proven roadmap to follow. And so it sucks that that always happens in our community. But now I see there's more people who are able through their own exits to invest in this company. And point of the matter is Richard Lou Dennis, who sold uh, Shea Moisture for over a billion dollars, was an investor in them and help put money into their business and help open doors for them to follow the same plan. And so I think it's an amazing thing that more and more people who look like us are paving the way and doing this. And more importantly, more and more people who I actually know, I can text, I have a drink with, I have a phone call in the middle of the day with, are now doing the things that we thought was impossible so that they can share with the world. And now I can share through experience with the world too. And so I think it's an amazing thing, man. And just kudos to you guys. It's so amazing to see and I can't wait to see what you guys do next. So hopefully this video was helpful. I'm gonna be in the comments answering any questions you have about my experience building and selling my business. Uh, anything that I left out here that you have questions on about building and selling a business. Um, yeah, so peace out. Hope this video was helpful.